greed is good. Greed motivates us. Greed wakes us up. Greed drives industry to give jobs to people where they would no, probably starve to death if they didn't have the work. So greed is fantastic. The trouble is greed is, takes over. Greed actually becomes addictive. Greed stops us thinking clearly. Greed stops us caring about one another. And even worse, greed makes us think distortedly about people. It distorts our perception. It distorts our personality. And it distorts our emotion. Take a look at this guy, these guys here. Now, I promise you, greed will not make you bald, okay? But these three are bald, I give you that. Now, first of all, you've got Dear Gollum from Lord of the Rings. Within two minutes of the book, Gollum had murdered his friend because he wanted the ring. Now, Frodo made it through three books without murdering anyone, so Gollum must have been greedy to start with. He wanted that ring. Then you have got um, our, dear, our dear chap here from one of the under the Bond movies. He has a distorted everything. He's got a distorted personality, a distorted emotional ideas about life. He's got distorted beliefs. And then, of course, you've got Ebenezer Scrooge. Started out life, very, very sensible young man, but he wanted more and more and more, and it distorted his emotions. So basically, greed does distort. But what's quite interesting is, although we, greed actually surrounds us every day, if you actually look at things in the newspapers, you will see that you know, the bank, bank, senior bank officials have these big fat bonuses, some kind of dictator is doing some crazy annihilation somewhere in the, in the world. So it's always in the media. So you would think we know an awful lot about greed in terms of science, but we don't know that much. But what we do know is that it becomes intoxicating, it becomes exhilarating, and it can lead to deception, and it can lead to us telling lies. Now, brain scans show us that when we are in a negative state and there's lots of negative emotions going on, that takes a huge amount of energy. And any neg a negative emotional response overrides executive functions like proper decision making and making judgments. So basically, when we're in a greedy place, our motivation systems and our emotion systems are working overtime, which is a really exhausting place to be. The trouble is with greed, it's never enough. We want more and more and more. And we get into a lather, we get into this frenzy. We start to think, oh my goodness, that person's got more than me. Oh, hang on a minute, I haven't got that. I need to be first in that queue. Oh, oh hang on a minute, I need la la la. And it goes on and on and on until we build ourselves up into this huge frenzy of anxiety. Now, that's a really stressful place to be. Now, stress is okay. Stress is good in small doses, in very small doses, because it keeps us awake. It keeps us sharp. That's great. No problem. But when we're in a chronic state of stress, when it continues for a very long time, cortisol, the stress hormone, is raging around our system far too much, and it actually causes us harm. It, we, our immunity system suffers. We may even get heart disease. Now, I don't know if you've noticed, but emotion is often contagious. Say, for instance, you're this person who's really bubbly and upbeat and really, really happy, and you go bouncing into a room and you want to chat to all sorts of people and you're smiley, everything's good. And then behind you, in walks a person who's sloping around their shoulders and they're shuffling their feet and they're looking really miserable. Horror upon horrors, this person engages you in conversation. For the next half an hour, they bombard you with so much negativity of what is wrong in the world, what is wrong with their life, what is wrong with the planet, what is wrong, everything negative, negative. And you, being this bouncy, lovely person, start to think, do you know what? I'm going to interrupt them in a minute and I'm going to give them some positive and change their mindset. And you try. And you give them something and you change the conversation and they just glaze over and they wait for you to draw a breath and they're in again with yet more negativity. You know the sort of people I'm talking about? I can see some nods in the audience. So you have this, you have this negative thing going on, and by the time, no matter how upbeat you are, you get like this too. Your short shoulders start to slope. It's a really negative place to be. Now, not only are those sort of emotions contagious, but so is greed. Consider the greedy boss. Consider perhaps this greedy boss is a 21st century Ebenezer Scrooge. Okay? Greedy boss is mean. Greedy boss doesn't want to give you a rise. Greedy boss expects you to work really, really long hours. So you don't feel too inclined to help this person. And like most businesses who go up and down, when the business is down, greedy boss wants you to do that extra, go that extra mile. 
And you, do you know what? You don't want to, do you? You're not in the mood to do that. And equally, what is quite interesting is that Greedy Boss doesn't notice that the stationery cupboard is getting rather low, that the printing ink is disappearing, that the pens are disappearing, the coffee's walking out of the room. So Greedy Boss doesn't understand that, so greed actually is contagious. Now, sadly, there are many, many people in this world who enough is never enough. And there are zillions of exceptionally wealthy people out there, really wealthy people. And some of them just do not know that enough is, is enough, enough. And they keep trying. They want more. They want more. What They want more. But what they don't realize is they don't actually want more in their bank balance. They don't actually want yet another shiny new car in the garage. What they really want is a higher level of self-esteem. What they really want is to feel good about themselves. But sadly, they don't realise that the only way they can feel good about themselves is by doing good for other people. So until they work that out, they're just going to get greedier and greedier and get more and more and more and less and less healthy and, and more and unhappier in a, in a very deep sense. Now, there are lots and lots of people in this world also who are powerful and generous. They are wealthy and generous. Look at people like spiritual leaders. Look at the Dalai Lama. Incredibly generous man, very powerful. Not necessarily wealthy, but he wants for nothing. But what about us lesser mortals? How do we get, gain some kind of internal power where we feel good about ourselves, but we're decent about everyone else? Now, the answer is actually very simple. And I demonstrated to this to myself some years ago. I had a meeting in London, in Fulham. I parked my car outside of a small park. I walked through the park, and as I was walking through, I noticed there was a man on my left, and he was sound asleep on a park bench. He was filthy dirty, and by the bench were some carrier bags that had lots of what looked like dirty rags in them. I kept walking. I got to the gate, and I found the office where I had my meeting, and everything was fine. I came back into the park, and this time he was on my right, and he's still sound asleep, and I kept walking. I got to the gate to where my car was parked, and I stopped. And I just knew I couldn't go on, and I waited, and I thought, do you know what? No, turn around, Linda. And I turned around, and I went back through the park, past the man again on my left, and went out, and I found a supermarket. And I bought an orange juice and a sandwich. I went back into the park and I very quietly approached the sleeping man. I didn't want to wake him because I had no idea how he had gone to sleep. He may have been under the influence of drugs or alcohol and he may have lashed out if I'd have startled him. And that would have made everything a hundred times worse. So I very quietly approached him and I laid down the sandwich and the orange juice by his head. And I left. That was it. I didn't talk about that for a very long time, but I do now to demonstrate a point. And the point is, I felt good about myself for days. I was on a roll. I felt healthy. I felt happy. I was, I was creative. I was efficient. I could do no wrong. I was doing great stuff. That kindness act, that act of kindness, actually made me feel fantastic. Now, I know there are many sceptics in the world, and they will be thinking to themselves when they hear that story, do you know what? So what? She was generous. That's not an altruistic act, because she got something back in return. And that's true. I really did. But I didn't mean for that to happen. I just wanted to help this guy in a very, very small way. The point is, if we carry on our lives looking for opportunities to help people and just give ourselves, give them five minutes of our time, and by the way, time is the most important thing we have, because without it, we have nothing. So when we give somebody our time, we are being incredibly generous, incredibly generous. You might even take them for a cup of coffee or even more. But when we look out for those opportunities, we're having a we're fantastic. So we feel good and they feel good. So this idea of altruism, actually, I, I'm not too keen on because we do get something in return by being generous. So altruism is not necessarily what it's made up to be because we always get something back. Okay, So I went along with my life and I'm now being generous wherever I can and I'm feeling really good about myself. So what's going on? Why, is, why do I feel better because I've been generous to somebody? Well, we get back to dopamine. Dopamine again, we, we stimulated dopamine when we, were, when we were being greedy. 
because we got something in return, but we also stimulate dopamine when we give because we get something in return. And the great thing about dopamine is it, it stimulates our motivation as well. So not only do we feel good, but we're more motivated and galvanized to do stuff. There's another neurotransmitter that's stimulated when we feel good, and that's serotonin. I'm sure you've all heard of serotonin. It's the happy chappy. Yeah? Happy chappy stimulates our mood, our sleep, our appetite, and our emotions. So when serotonin is raging around the brain doing what, we, what it should be doing, we actually eat better, we sleep better, and we feel good about ourselves. Now, there's something else I would like to talk to you about, and they're something called neuropeptides, which I'm sure some of you have heard of. They're bidirectional, and some research suggests that neuropeptides turn on emotion, and emotion turns on neuropeptides. Now, neuropeptides are little messengers that don't just affect the brain, they affect us right through the body as well, because they act like hormones, so they're all over the place and making us feel much better. Neuropeptides help our immunity system. They help us remember better by helping with our memory storage. They help our in inflammation. They help lots and lots of other things. There are specific neuropeptides also that help, which some of them you've heard of, like endorphins. Endorphins are the body's natural painkiller. There's oxytocin. Oxytocin lowers inflammation, lowers blood pressure, lowers stress. Then there's vasopressin and nitric oxide. When they're raging around doing what they should be doing, it increases our circulation. So it helps with heart disease. So all of a sudden, all those things are in place and all these chemicals are doing this great stuff because we put our brain in this place of being much more pleasurable, much more generous. But there's also another part of the brain called the mesolimbic reward pathway. Now, this is a really, really ancient part of the brain and that is activated when we're, when we're generous and when we're kind. That's fantastic. That means we're now hardwired to be generous as well. What good news is that? Psychologists tell us today, when we're generous and volunteering to help people, we can actually lengthen our lives and feel better in the same, at the same time. But there's something that people underestimate, even if you don't want to talk about neuroscience. And that is, when we're generous and we reach out to people, we're actually expanding our social network. Now, isolation and loneliness are rife in our country and other countries as well. Isolation and loneliness are the underpinnings of depression and exacerbate dementia, to name but two. And dementia, as we all know, is in the news constantly because it's such a major problem in the world. Okay? So just think, by being generous to people and expanding our social network, we're helping that. That's really big news and we can do it so easily, so simply. Now, I know in my heart that many people are generous and they're kind. I know that. Of course they are, but the trouble is we're always so busy and we tend to forget. So I, we've come up with an idea. It's an initiative called Community Mix-Up Week, which is the first week of July, and it starts this year in 2014. Community Mix-Up Week is all about mixing up the generations, mixing up genders, mixing up um, different cultural backgrounds. And the idea is, in Community Mix-Up Week, we go to see somebody who we don't, do, don't normally communicate with, and we go out for, I don't know, afternoon tea, be terribly English about it, or we go for a walk. Or we might even have a street party, make it really big and exciting. Okay. However, there is a small caveat here, and that is, if you go knocking on somebody's door and just say, hey, it's Community Mix-Up Week, do you want to come to the pub? They will probably call the police. So it's not a good plan. So I strongly suggest if you do want to join in a community mix-up week and actually em embrace other people and be generous with your time, that you might be, would prefer to be introduced to somebody or go via your GP if nobody knows them or a spiritual leader, something like that. So generosity actually makes us feel brilliant. There is another caveat I want to mention. If we are busy beavering away, trying to make ourselves feel better because we're trying to make other people feel better, we are not angels. I can't see any angel wings out here in the audience, okay? And I'm not wearing any either. We're human beings, and we can burn ourselves out a little bit by being over overly generous and kind in nature. So we've got to be kinder to ourselves as well as other people. Now, I am incredibly hopeful about the future because neuroscience is 
spewing out so much data on a daily basis from laboratories about what's going on in the brain. And when we're adding that to what we know in psychology and what we know in our, in our hearts of what is right and what is wrong, when we add all that up in the mix, so it really looks good. It's looking good because we're learning so much more about ourselves. So my message is this, ladies and gentlemen. Generosity is not just about what you think. It's much deeper than that. It's good for our health and it's good for our happiness. I'm Linda Shaw. Thank you for listening.